What's up people? You have found the Kale Report and I'm Scott Killian and today we're talking about the Cuisine Art Twin Oaks Gas and Pellet Grill. Stay tuned. <laughs> And here we are with setup complete. While I have your attention, take a moment to subscribe to my channel. If you watch this full video and like it, leave a comment. I would appreciate it. I want to go over the few things here that persuaded me to buy this grill over some of the others. We will sweep left to right and go a full 360 around this, pointing out different features that set it off in my opinion. Now, with the assembly, it took about two hours and 10 minutes with minimal help to be honest uh i think uh now that i've done this looking back on it with uninterrupted time i could probably have one together in 90 minutes and the only thing needed to put it together was a phillips head screwdriver give you a hint don't over tighten anything it'll get uh part of your legs and stand and the shields there kind of out of place but overall it was a 30 step process not too bad just make sure you got enough room to do it all right here we go so on the left, you see it is a 30 pound hopper here at the top. And with this, get it loaded up here. I've got it filled up. There is a sensor in the bottom that will let you know if you are running low on pellets. And then here in the top is your probes. You have two probes that you can pull out and plug into the front to check your meat. So if you're doing a Boston butt or some ribs, you got everything set in there, you need to know what the internal temperature is, the probes will do it. It will show it here, as well as a Bluetooth app. Going back, you can see Bluetooth there. You can Bluetooth to this and download a barbecue app. It's the Cuisine Art uh, barbecue app uh, for outside grilling. It has different recipes. It keeps up with your temp probes and various things there uh, i've fooled around with it a little bit haven't even used the grill yet so uh hopefully this evening for dinner that's what we're having is uh i did buy some new york strips today down here on the left side toward the bottom you see the two white spots is where i pulled off the um advertising that was on there but that is a heavy duty iron skillet with places to hang it so it stays in place. You can saute some vegetables here, do breakfast items, griddles, grilled cheese, pancakes, bacon, you name it. Then you see the uh, auger leading to the fire pit or firebox underneath. Um, simple clean out here as you lift this and pull this handle, it will open up It'll pull out further. You'll, it'll open up the firebox, drop the items into it. And I'll show you here in a moment where to pull that out. As we continue around, you can see on the settings, anywhere from 200 to 400 degrees. It does have lighting on the inside, which you can see here on the pellet side and then here on the gas chamber side, gas grill side. One of the things I like about this is the warming racks flip up. So if you have a large Boston, uh, Boston butt or you wanna do two different turkeys, you can set two turkeys up right here, do your cooking. I'll remove these grates out of the way. That exposes a heat shield and down below. Sorry for the noise. And then you can see another heat distribution and underneath it is the firebox where the pellets feed into from the auger. And one of the things with this is you do have to have it Plugged up you do have to have 
110 power to the grill plugged up. There's a cord in the back. We'll get to that. That causes the auger to go, the igniter for the firebox as well as the igniters for the gas side. It is a three gas burner with a side burner. Get that out. And one of the things I kind of like with this, you don't see where the gas chamber is. I can reroute the gas line there, but it shows the tank here on the side. But I like the fact that I can hide that, that line. And when you're looking at it, it's just a clean look at the grill. So along with the app and checking your temperatures, you have appliance grade windows. When the lights are on, you can see what's cooking inside there. On the back, as we go around, here's the, the grease trap. It drains into there for an easy pull out. And I was mentioning earlier, there's where you'd remove the ash from the firebox. If you do notice, one of the things that's a little different with this versus other pellet smokers is no smokestack. I kind of like the looks of the smokestack, but in a way, it gets in the way of a grill cover. I'm gonna, I've currently got this under my carport. It'll end up on my deck. Might have been a good idea to put it together on the deck as it is quite heavy. I'm hoping heavy leads to heavy duty. Get a little shaky there. So as I come around back to here, here is where your smoke's gonna come out on this particular smoker. Not necessarily a smoke vent as there is not one. Easy, get my gimbal to work here. All right, guys. So, overall impression, I'm going to just go okay. The looks of the grill, I absolutely love it. Assembly wasn't bad, but this beast is heavy. It will take two people. There's no doubt about it. You need someone to hold something while you're screwing the other piece in, and it'll take two people. It used for me, it took three. It took two of us to lift the grilling surface up and onto the stand and another one to kind of help guide it in place. Um, moving this up there where the old grill is, is not going to be an easy feat, but um, I'll probably empty the hopper. There's a quick empty on it. If I wanted to change um, the pellets, go from a mesquite to a fruity taste to a charcoal, whichever. So uh, I'll probably empty that and take the gas cylinder off and that'll make it a little easier. Otherwise, that's it. Stay tuned for a follow-up video. I'm going to do a few runs on this to see how it goes and then we will do a follow-up video on it and perhaps that okay will turn into a KO. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.